Hi, welcome to grammar lesson number one on sentence combining. There are four ways to combine sentences in English. The first is by using a comma plus a conjunction. The second is by using a semicolon. The third is by using a semicolon plus a transition word, also known as a conjunctive adverb. And the fourth is using a dependent clause to introduce an independent clause. So let's go ahead and take a look at method number one, the comma plus the conjunction. There are seven conjunctions in English, for, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. If you write them out in that order and take a look at the first letters of each word, you'll notice that they spell out the word fanboys. So if you're having difficulty remembering the seven conjunctions in English, remember fanboys and they might come to you a little more easily. So, you use a comma plus a conjunction to combine two complete sentences. Make sure to place the comma before the conjunction when you're combining sentences. And remember, a complete sentence contains both a subject and a verb, and it can stand alone as a complete thought. So, for example, my cat is gray, comma, and his name is Presley. Sentence number one is my cat is gray. Sentence number two is his name is Presley. The sentences are combined with a comma followed by the conjunction and. So let's look at some other examples. Pick up that mess, comma, or you are in big trouble. You'll notice sentence number one is pick up that mess. Sentence number two is you are in big trouble. And they are combined with the comma plus the conjunction or. Other examples include green is my favorite color, comma, but I decided to wear purple today. It is time for lunch, comma, so I am going to go get a sandwich. So let's go ahead and look at method number two using the semicolon. If you have two complete sentences that are very closely related to each other in meaning, you can combine those sentences by placing a semicolon in between them. A semicolon looks like a period on top of a comma. So for example, my dog's name is Baxter, semicolon, he is a chow. Sentence number one is my dog's name is Baxter. Sentence number two is he is a chow. The sentences are combined with a semicolon because they're both very closely related. They are both about my dog. Remember, however, you cannot use the semicolon if the two sentences are not closely related. So for example, you could not say, my dog's name is Baxter, semicolon, I like ham. No, these two sentences are not related, so they don't make sense when they're combined by using a semicolon. So let's look at some other correct examples. I love music, semicolon, my favorite kind is rhythm and blues from the 1960s. Both of these sentences relate to my relationship with music, okay, so it's okay to go ahead and use the semicolon there. Another example is my grass is long, semicolon, I'll cut it tomorrow. Both of these sentences relate to the grass in my yard. So method number three is the semicolon plus a transition word. Sometimes you need a transition word, also known as a conjunctive adverb, to help you make a sentence read more smoothly, to show an opposing view on a topic, to help you continue your thought, or to indicate a change in the direction of a sentence. In any of those cases, you use a semicolon followed by words like however, moreover, consequently, therefore, in addition, otherwise, and nevertheless. So for example, my favorite color is green, semicolon, however, comma, pink is a close second. These sentences are very closely related because they both tell you something about my favorite colors. Also, notice that a comma always follows the transition word, okay? My favorite color is green, semicolon, however, comma, pink is a close second. Don't forget that comma. Let's look at some other examples. I like to watch Modern Family, semicolon, moreover, I also enjoy parks and recreation. These two sentences 
are very closely related because they discuss the television shows that I enjoy watching. In the next example, I do not like to go to the mall, semicolon, therefore, comma, I will not do my shopping there. Both of those sentences relate to my attitudes about shopping malls. So they must be very, cl very closely related in meaning, okay, or you cannot use the semicolon. So let's go ahead and look at method number four, using a dependent clause to introduce an independent clause. If you find that you're writing a lot of short, choppy sentences, you might try beginning a few of them with a dependent clause. Remember, a dependent clause cannot stand alone as a complete sentence, okay? And it must be followed by a comma to separate it from the independent clause. So for example, when I went to the store, comma, I bought some bread. The dependent clause is when I went to the store and it is followed by a comma. That cannot stand alone as a complete sentence. However, I bought some bread is a complete sentence, also known as an independent clause. It completes a thought. So note, the dependent clause is not a complete sentence but the independent clause is a complete sentence. So let's look at some other examples. If you go to the park, comma, take the dog. The dependent clause is if you go to the park, followed by the comma. While I was watching the movie, comma, my phone rang. Again, the dependent clause is while I was watching the movie, followed by the comma. Because my friend makes me laugh, comma, I like to talk with her. Finally, the dependent clause is because my friend makes me laugh, followed by the comma. The last example is while hanging pictures on my wall, comma, I dropped one, comma, and the glass cracked. Note, in this example, a comma follows the dependent clause while hanging pictures on my wall and a comma follows the word one. This is because the sentence I dropped one and the sentence the glass cracked are each complete sentences that are combined with a comma and the conjunction and, just like you see in method number one. So don't forget, sometimes you need to combine methods to make your sentences grammatically correct. If you have any questions, please make sure that you see your instructor or you can visit the University Writing Center in 031 Library. See you next time.